Welcome back to the channel, hope you're all well. In this video I'm going to go through how I edited this image into this image. So let's start off with this original image. I'll just tell you a little bit about it. We've obviously got our model here. This section, this leather section, was part of a jacket which we just ripped up and put around the neck. Um, here underneath is a big metal ball. It's actually a fruit ball turned the other way around. And then over here, we've got some more of this jacket that's just been wrapped up and placed around the top. Now, first off, looking at this image, there's a lot of crudeness in terms of the way this leather piece is. It's all wonky. It's not really straight. The buckles are all out of alignment. This big white area here needs fixing. And we just basically need to create something that's a lot more symmetrical and a lot more clinical even the shoulder here you can see it's a lot more raised than the other side now one of the tips i can give you is using um using symmetry as a way to refine an image in other words if we get one side of this image correct we can mirror and flip it to the other side and basically create something that's symmetrical now if we come over here to the top of the head, we can see this guy's like wonky, tilting off to the right. We've got all these stray hairs, etc. So what I did is I did a full retouch, cleaning the skin, cloning, liquefying, and this is what I ended up with after I was finished. And if we just come to the top part, and I'll turn this layer on and off and you can see what happened. So all the hairs have been cleaned up, the skin has been retouched, but then I've used a liquify tool and I've straightened that section up. You'll also notice the background is all clean, all those little, little stray hairs have been taken away. Let's move on down to this part of the neck. So we'll go back to the beginning. You'll see this buckle here was actually a good buckle. This one, it was a little bit wonky, but this one was a good one. So I've copied this and I've moved it across into the middle. And then I've used that same buckle further on ahead. Here where we've got all this wonky texture, I've smoothed that out using the mixer brush tool and also using the liquify tool. I've pushed it back into place. And then once I've got this nice clean section on this side, including the neck area here, if we just see, We've kind of tucked this guy in. Again, pushing using the liquify tool. Once I've got that section there, I then copied it and I flipped it over to the other side. You'll also notice her shoulder is actually a copy of this shoulder now. Okay, so we've got that really nice symmetrical feel. Now down here where we had this ball, you see I've missed the spot here actually looking back. Um, I basically took the darkness from here and I copied it in using the clone tool. So that's quite a big dramatic change and that was the first part of the edit. Now I could have just left it as that, but you know, the image really wants something extra. Now what I've done is I've changed the color here. So I've used the color balance tool and I've messed around with the red channel, removing a lot of the red and adding in some blue into the shadows. And then I've created this very washed out look here. Next, I wanted to brighten the image a little bit more, which is what I did here. And then on this stage, I used the Nick Color Effects Analog Effects Pro, and I added a light leak filter over the top, which kind of worked, it gave me this sci-fi look. Unfortunately though, by doing this, we've got a very faded image. So I've added in a background darken layer, which essentially is just a curves layer, which I've masked in using a brush. I then use the levels in order to add a little bit more contrast again back into the image. And then I wanted to add some contrast because at the moment it's all blue, it's all cool. I wanted to add some color contrast. So I started off with this red glow, almost as though there's like an energy. And that essentially just is 
the gradient tool and we can set any color we want so I'll just pick this red color um, let's come up to here let's just pick a red color here and I've essentially all I've done is I've added a red glow then I wanted to add a white glow almost like so hot there's an element of like this white light coming through and then I've also added a little bit more of a highlight on the left. So this is just kind of bringing in these glows of light. Then I've brightened the whole image again, added some sharpening. Um, and then in this one, we added another filter, which added a bit of a color to the skin. I felt it was a little bit too worn out. On top of that, I then did a bit more dodging and burning using a 50% grey brighten layer set to soft light. You'll see I've just brightened some areas here just to add a little bit more dimension. And then I've also darkened the cheeks a little bit just to add a little bit more sculpture to the face. Then I've added a bit of a blur layer. This is a foundation layer I call it and it's basically a Gaussian blur which I've just added to soften the skin. And then the levels have come back in again in order to add that contrast back in. Next, so I decided I'd add in some of these glow sparkles. And I think I found this image on the internet, if I remember correctly. It was just fire glow. And then I've added a few more in, and then a few more in here. That's just a brush. There's a little bit of a color balance going on here now with the eye. Just made the eyes a bit blue. And then I added a curves layer to the eyes, which brightened them and gave them this almost robotic appearance. Then I've darkened the background again, because again, it looked a little bit washed out. And that was the final look, which is adding in a color grade over the top using um, Nick Color Color Effects Pro. And that was adding in a cross process CPE4 filter. So I've actually used not only Photoshop, but I've also used Nick Color Effects, which used to be free, but then I purchased that. And it's a great tool and you can you know, you can really get some nice effects out of it, depending on how you use it and combinations in, in the way you use it. So essentially, this is it. This is the final image. That's our before. And that's our after. Now, I don't usually create work like this. And to be honest, this was just a bit of fun. When I first started out Photoshop photography work, I was doing more of this kind of stuff, like really out there trying out all these crazy edits and so forth. And then as I moved into fashion, it became a lot less in your face and a lot more subtle, but it was nice to just go back and create something a little bit edgy and also just hone and practice your Photoshop skills. Now I know this has not been a step-by-step -step edit because actually this is an old image that I just pulled out of the archives and realized I actually had the Photoshop file for it still. Um, so it's not something I've done recently, but I still wanted to share this with you and maybe hopefully give you some ideas on my process in creating this image. Hopefully you found it useful. Um, if you've got any questions about anything, if you'd like to see more of this kind of stuff, if you want to see a step-by-step -step creative edit on an image, put those comments below. Remember to give a thumbs up. Thank you for everyone that is following me and supporting me. Hit that notification bell so you get the next video on your notifications. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.